I'll call the meeting to order. <coughs> we have any citizens' comments? None. I do not hear much to adopt the agenda. Motion to adopt Roman three and four. I've got a motion to adopt the whole agenda and uh, as well as uh, dispense with item three or item four. I hear a second. Second. Saved by Dr. Lindsay. All those in favor? Motion carries. Dr. Williams, first up. It is that time of the year where we uh, start to put together our application for uh, the next level of the board recognitions. We will be applying for exemplary board uh, this year. And part of that requirement, of course, is to do the self-assessment. Thank and you. So, uh, Thank you, Heather. You've got an email going out at 7 p.m. tonight that will hit your inbox. Uh, it, it'll take you less than five minutes to do the survey. But you want to go on your computer or your phone, uh, you'll have that uh, later this evening. So uh, we'll start to pull all that together here in the next couple of months. All right. Next item up is uh, Mr. Adam Lindsay giving us an update on the Gainesville Athletics Hall of Fame and Coupa 985. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so excited to announce our uh, 2023 uh, Hall of Fame, uh, Athletics Hall of Fame uh, induction class. Um, and I'll tell you just a little bit about each of them. Uh, Preston Riddle Huber uh, is coming out of our, our athlete 50 plus category. Right. Okay. Riddle Huber. I knew I was going to say that wrong. <laughs> uh, a 1962 graduate of Gainesville High School, Riddle Huber earned an All State honors in football and baseball before choosing a football scholarship at the University of Georgia over a contract offer from the Pittsburgh Pirates. A two year starter quarterback for the Bulldogs and Vince Dooley's first two years as head coach, Riddle Huber went 13 7 1, earning Sun Belt or Sun Bowl. MVP honors after Georgia topped Texas Tech 7-0 in the 1964 Sun Bowl. He then had a short stint in the NFL and AFL playing for the Falcons in their inaugural seasons in 1966, followed by the Oakland Raiders in 1968 and the Buffalo Bills in 1969. Um, then we move on to our category for our coach athletic supporter, um, and we actually chose two this year, um, Coach Jerry Davis and Coach Manson Hill. Uh, during Jerry Davis's 28 years spent at the helm of the Gainesville Boys Basketball Program, he amassed 701 wins, including in those wins were 24 sub-region and region titles, 11 Lanierland championships, and two state titles during a magical stretch in the early 80s, where his teams uh, won 35 straight games. At the time of his retirement in 2008, Coach Davis was second in the state among active coaches and wins. He was named the George, George Athletic Coaches uh, Coach, George Athletic Coaches Association State Coach of the Year twice and Region Coach of the Year ten times. Coach Manson Hill, uh, Manson Hill's uh, 39 years coaching at Gainesville High School includes stints in tennis and golf, along with his heralded time as the head girls basketball coach. All told, he won seven state championships, four in basketball, and 30 region titles, 10, uh, and 10 in basketball. In addition, Hill uh, is a four-time uh, GACA State Coach of the Year and 30-time Region Coach of the Year. In our Athlete Category 2, which is 25-plus, um, uh, um, uh, is uh, Shelly Garner-Black. On October 25th, 25th, 1985, with an extra point that put Gainesville up 21-7 to on Madison County, then uh, Gainesville junior Shelly Garner Black made history as the first female to score a point and score a point in Georgia High School Association football game. But that wasn't the only history she made for an all boys squad at GHS. Black scored the first soccer goal by a female in the spring of her junior year while starting for the Red Elephants. The school at the time did not have a girls program. The goal uh, came on a penalty kick. It should also be noted that Black started the girls' soccer program as the head coach in 1994. <laughs> also, uh, our, we're actually putting in a, a set of twins uh, in athletes, category one, uh, Lee Miller and Leah Lee Miller Tooley and Mason Miller. Uh, identical twins, Lee Miller Tooley and Mason Miller, never lost a high school tennis match in their four years representing Gainesville High School. Members of the class of 1998, they helped the Red Elephant Tennis Program to four straight state titles and one state championship in 1995, playing as the number one and number two singles, both ranked in the top 20 in the junior circuit, and as the number one and number two players in Georgia 
Lee and Mason each uh, received full scholarships uh, while uh, with Lee going to Wake Forest and then Georgia Tech while Mason went on, went only to Georgia Tech. Our team this, uh, this year is the 1998 Soccer State Championships under the leadership of head coach Jim, Jim O'Callaghan and assistant coach Chip Branch, the 1998 Gainesville Boys uh, soccer team won the program's first state championship. So we're excited about uh, adding the, that group to our Hall of Fame. Again, that banquet will be on April 15th at the Gainesville Civic Center. You're all, of course, invited to, to join. As far as the COPA 985 is concerned, um, this is a league that is, uh, was formed around the 985 corridor, hence the name COPA 985. The teams included in this soccer league are Chester, <laughs> Cherokee Bluff, East Hall, Flowery Branch, Gainesville, Haversham, Johnson, and West Hall, although West Hall has opted out this year. Uh, within the, the program, there are five different trophies of, of boys and girls varsity trophy, uh, JV girls, JV boys, and then a best program. Uh, rankings are based on a point system, six points for a win, three for a tie. Any tie is, there's no overtime in these. Uh, you get one point for a goal up to three, uh, one point for a shootout. Uh, team at max can uh, earn 10 points for a game. For the over overall, uh, they add up all the points the teams earn throughout the season. Um, it's to entice uh, pro schools to have all four teams participate. Um, this obviously replaces the what used to be the Mountain Cup. And it's obviously just trying to get, you know, all of the, the Hall County schools and Haversham, you know, playing each other and trying to have active, strong programs. Um, that's the COPA 985. Also, while I was here, I, I just wanted to take a second to, I know y'all have heard about the uh, meal program that the athletics uh, department has been doing. As of today, we have served 7,170 meals at an average cost of 72 cents per meal. And we want to um, make sure you're all aware that food is fully funded by the donations to the Gainesville Athletic Club. Any questions? It's good food. <laughs> Dr. Williams sat down with me on, on Friday night. Yes, sir. Uh, Adam, the, is it envisioned that COPA 985 will become something like Lanier Land? Um, I, I don't know that's necessarily the, the vision of it. Um, you know, it's really just trying to, you'll understand that sometimes we struggle with getting our local teams to play us. Um, this is, I think, kind of just trying to give a reason for them to play us. Okay, you mentioned the trophies. Those are team trophies? Yes, one one, on one for boys, one for girls, both varsity, one for JV boys and girls, and one for most uh, best overall program. Uh, has, has the uh, tournament committee discussed uh, MVP trophies? No, this is just really something actually that was kind of put together by the Habersham coach. Um, so they just kind of, this is the first year they've kind of done it this way. So it's really not progressed through all of that. Okay. If you don't mind, if you, at the right point, might you bring that up? It'd be a nice sure. honor to be an MVP of a Absolutely. tournament that can have stature Absolutely. As, it, as it grows. And we certainly have good enough soccer in this area that, that it warrants it. Yes. And we have folks who pioneered soccer here, especially us. Uh, you mentioned Chip Branch. He's one of them. Gene Nexta was our first coach, the late Gene Nexta. Um, so we've got folks who are pioneers in the soccer world. I'm sure other schools might, but we certainly do. Absolutely. If there might become MVP trophies. Any other questions? Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. Adam, here. Sorry, you take that with you, please. All right, next item on the agenda are some action items. We have capital projects fund, uh, various improvements to the schools, Mr. Nile. Thank you. We bring, bring for you tonight. Uh, List of capital projects. Several years ago, we created a capital projects fund that we funded, uh, identifying several projects uh, that were capital items that we did. So again, tonight we'd like to establish again capital projects fund. Uh, there's a list before you, everywhere from Gainesville High School, uh, 
elevator replacement, uh, new flooring, uh, furniture fixtures and equipment for both the new three-story building as well as the existing three-story building, uh, fencing along the exterior perimeter of the school, uh, some branding, signing, some wayfinding, uh, new restrooms at Valentine Center for, uh, for events there at the practice field, camera upgrades, several locations, also demolition of the gateway property, and then also some cl clearing and grubbing along the frontage of uh, Centennial along Pearl Nicks, very similar to what we did along uh, front entrance Pearl Nicks of, for the high school. So we, we create this fund, move uh, 3.530 uh, million into this account. And as we do these projects, we bring them back before you uh, for approval. This approves us to establish, create a funding for these projects tonight. We request your approval. And we also have as a part of this action item what would be approved tonight. So just looking at that list as a whole, it lets you know what's going to be happening in a short period of time, really at the high school. Um, the flooring replacement that you see there and the furniture, fixture, and equipment. We want to make sure that the current building matches what's going in the new building. So the floors will be the same, the walls are getting painted this summer, the ceiling tiles are getting redone, they're getting new uh, dry or dry erase boards, the interactive panels are getting put back in, all new furniture, teacher desks. So when our kids return in the fall uh, to the new school year, regardless of which building they're in, they're gonna have the same look inside each of those buildings. Uh, that's a 21 year old building, I believe, Great. and we're still using furniture that uh, may or may not have been used in other places before it made its way into that building. Uh, and so really it's an opportunity for us to ensure that the current building kind of has that same look and expectation as the new building. We do have a couple of schools with the IP cameras there. Uh, that are currently analog cameras that need to be uh, digital. Uh, so they have two different uh, hard drives now, one for um, our digital and one for uh, the analog. So that's getting that up to speed. And of course, behind Centennial, the gateway property that Mr. Niles mentioned, um, that we were getting quotes on that. Uh, they have moved out of that property. Our preference is to uh, demolish it as soon as possible so that it does not become a place uh, that it can get some people in trouble. Um, and you'll see just a few things there. One big item is the fencing. We are looking to extend the, the brick columns and aluminum fence that is around the practice fields uh, around the rest of the campus. And we have a map uh, that we'd like to show you a little bit later as well. We don't have the quotes on that entirely yet, but those are the estimates that when we do get the final quotes, we'll come back uh, to the board as a whole. For the existing three-story that high school, you've already, you know, prior approval, given us approval for HVAC replacements. We uh, have already done one fl second floor. This allows us to do the entire first floor and third floor. That's already approved. Uh, equipment's already been ordered. Again, several of these items like furniture, fixtures, and equipment for uh, both buildings. Uh, it is just to get ahead of the game, go ahead and get all that furniture ordered. We can get it on order now then hopefully, you know, we don't deal with any supply chain issues come July and August. Uh, furniture and fixtures, of course, we purchase all of that uh, from state bid list. And uh, as we bring that to you, it'll have the state bid list numbers and all that on it as well. And so tonight, board, what we're asking is to transfer those funds, but also approve these four items from that list. Elevator replacement, floor replacement at GHS, furniture, fixtures, and equipment at GHS, and then restrooms at Valentine's Center there at Gates Block. So we'll have roughly a balance of 1.8 to spend out of the three point four. And the bulk of that will be going towards the fence. Okay. Any other questions for either Mr. Nile or Dr. Williams? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is all this furniture. <laughs> <laughs> what, what becomes of surplus furniture? Uh, that which is not sold on govdeals.com. Uh, we go through and look at it, and if it's you know in poor poor condition, then it's just discarded. Uh, some items that's in relatively decent uh, 
condition, we'll actually store some of that off campus. So the schools could take a look? Yes, it'll be available. We'll, we have storage uh, here in town that we'll put some of those items in. And the desk will be those desks that you, that you saw at our middle schools with the Great. boomerang looking desk where you can put four together, six together, just to make it a little more manageable inside the classroom. Uh, motion to approve, and I have an amendment. Let's hear the amendment before we second it. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> we got a second. <laughs> Chairman, uh, I have two. Uh, number one, I've shared with you what we have on record as a survey on the Fair Street campus. Uh, if you will look closely at the yellow line, which is school owned, uh, this needs dire work. Uh, and upgrading. So, number one is as I proposed with their acquiescence $8,000 for a new survey for Fair Street. That, that estimate comes from Mr. Niles. Secondly, is a, a security matter at Centennial for their play field. Uh, there is a uh, security fence uh, buffering the field from the woods leading toward the rock toward Chesapeake. There, it is not adequate. Uh, for example, when when a ball goes over the fence, it is lost. Uh, the kids cannot climb the fence. It's it's dangerous to go down that embankment. Uh, through the woods, so it's generally also that security fence needs an upgrade. Uh, Mr. Niles is suggesting a forty thousand uh, dollar approval for Centennial Security. So that would be part of this. It would be added to this. To this. Right, uh, Rochester uh, and Associates did the initial survey there at Fair Street when the building was built. So we tap into them and let them clean up the survey, clean up all of the uh, survey property down, even toward Boys and Girls Club property, where it looks like there is some discrepancies. And then also there at Centennial, yes, we priced out the netting and the installment of the netting, and uh, it comes in at around $40,000. Both are qualified in your opinion as capital. Uh, yes. So, Sammy, run me again. What is the purpose of the survey? Uh, uh, this is not the gospel, by the way, what you see on this area. This is from the county. Now, a survey will, would be. We'll pull right. The survey. That's what, yeah. right. Yeah. We'll have Rochester. But what's, the, what, what's the purpose survey? of it? Uh, <coughs> you know, and then let's see between us and Boys and Girls Club what we should own and what they should own. What we need to acquire or allow for right away or easement, uh, but it basically needs a it needs a cleanup. So the survey that Rochester did when we built the new Fair Street, we don't think it's accurate. Well, we'll have them pull it, and we'll ver verify it and, um, as much as they've got, and we'll actually walk and look at pinpoints. <laughs> And make sure that it is accurate. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example. It was about four years ago, you and I went out there and they had a water main break. Correct. And it was kind of one of these corners. And it was like, well, whose is it? Is it the school? Is it, was it a girls' club? Is it the right of? I mean, there was a big discussion about it. We got it fixed. Uh, but it was a huge, really sinkhole in the corner of their building, yeah. right where um, a lot of water was running into that area. Remember in the news, uh, there was some vandalism and a fire set on some uh, physical education right. equipment Play. outside the Boys and Girls Club. But then Boys and Girls Club raised funds and replaced the playground. So it just kind of, it's a gray area down there. 
it's great. And, I, and I'm okay. I'm not in any way trying to cause an issue with boys, but uh, I'm just trying to clean up our site. So it costs $8,000 for y'all to look at the survey they've already done? The cost that we've gotten is five to 8000 so I'd rather come and they, and they redo the right. Thing. They heard the eight number. That's what we wanted. <laughs> and Jill, can you edit that out? <laughs> All right. The Smith has amended. We got. Uh, I guess we need to take it on his amendment. What is that? What is that? Yeah, he did. Okay. Well, he didn't know what the amendment was. We, we have as a second by Mr. Norton. All right. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Mr. Niles. Thank you. Next item is Mr. Niles. Uh, are, you, are you presenting that you also added a Gainesville High only uh, project list? Was that just for our information? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. You'll remember the lighting. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. We'll be working with Huntley Georgia Pilot on that. Situation. Right, Mrs. Hobson, will you talk to us about a learning management system? Yes, sir. You'll remember that I came before you um, in a previous meeting to request approval for the licensing and the startup costs for the learning management system Canvas. Tonight, I'm coming before you to ask for approval for contracted professional learning services. Um, one of the things I know for sure, having implemented six or seven different LMSs over the course of my career, is that the professional development in the beginning is crucial uh, to ensuring that we have a successful implementation, that we have good adoption, that we get consistency in the way that we do use the LMS. Um, and so we're coming before you tonight to ask for your approval uh, for contracted services through the company in structure that is providing us the LMS in the amount of $250,000. We will be using ESSER two funds for this, and that has already um, gotten approved by the Department of Education for us to use those funds in that way. So to simplify this, this is basically consulting, implementation, training. Exactly. Boots on, on, on the on ground, the someone here support. all the time supporting us, available to meet with teachers, go in classrooms, see what they're doing, give recommendations, share new ideas. And so with this, having somebody on the ground, they're here for the whole year, for the yeah. first two months? How does they're, that they're here for a year. starting out secondary is working the heaviest. Right. We we are implementing the LMS 612. That's what we, you know, agreed uh, as far as our purchase is concerned. We purchased it for students in grades 6 through 12. Uh, so this focus will be on our middle schools and high schools and working with teachers in those locations. Do we have an idea when they're typically working with school systems? Um, is this a Next year, we'll probably want to do the same thing, or do they feel like the first year they're here, and then after that, we can handle it? We can sustain it from there. And if we need to back off some of that, we still have extra three funds available for the following year. So, if we part of our model is training our people to then train others as well, right? And so, with that train the trainer model, hopefully, we'll need it beyond uh, this next year. But if we do, we know Esther is there for that purpose. Are there any other questions? Your motion to approve. I uh, make a motion to approve. A motion by Mr. Norton. Is there a second? Okay. You got a second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Motion carries. I'll have the second. All right. Uh, do we have any discussion? I have one item, please. Uh, could uh, the staff refresh us? Uh, in terms of the number of students who are living at extended stay locations, uh, you can send it later. I, I texted it to Ben the other day, so he had. I'd, I'd like to know the, the number and the location. Okay. okay. So I don't know if we do locations, but I can get the number. Thank you. There's, there's a good bit of conversation about 
extended studies at the, at the state capital. Their value and safety, that, that would be helpful. Thank you, thank you. Any other discussion items? I hear motion to adjourn into executive session. So moved. And motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second. Second by Dr. Lindsay. All those in favor? Motion carried. Thank you, everyone. Just so everybody, 66.